knowing myself as uh, being the kind of person that tends to go off track when sharing his ideas, uh, I've taken the liberty to write them down just to make sure that these ideas in which I believe are going to be shared with you today. So uh, first of all, I'm a sneaker artist. And now what does a sneaker artist actually mean? What am I doing? Uh, I paint sneakers for a living and I combine this with social media itself. So starting out, uh, let's, let's make like a rundown of how I started. Um, fifth grade, I would write poetry, but also use the 10 minute recess to run to the bakery and get donuts, which I would then sell for double the cost. So <laughs> this allowed me to go and buy more snacks. So after that, uh, as a kid from the countryside, because I'm not from Bucharest, I went to a high school in Bucharest. And this was the first taste that I got at diversity. So by that time, I had taken on professional volleyball, professional gaming, so PC gaming. And I slowly but surely started to realize the value and importance of money. So these passions had a cost to them, which and the passions themselves were not always giving back in terms of monetary value. So there was always like the option of going to my parents, you know, asking them for money. But every time I would do that, I would feel like I'm not doing enough. And a bit later, they told me something that I still stand by. They said, if you want something more expensive, if you want something be better, so regardless of what it is, you have to work for it yourself. We're going to help you with the basic, and if you want the extra package, you got to work for it. So I've, I, I tend to go by, that, by those values at the same time. Now, <laughs> sorry. Uh, with time, um, going to high school, I became strategic. Remember how I used to sell donuts? Well, now I used to make a list the day before and then cook for my colleagues. This would get me a bit of money, which I would then put into, I don't know, gaming and volleyball themselves. And th there was this thing that I would do to invest in myself as a gamer. I would go uh, spend the nights at internet cafes with teams just to practice. Uh, afterwards, I went to college and uh, I realized that I had to give up something. So I gave up on volleyball and gaming uh, to pursue a career in marketing. I, I thought that was the best choice for me. Turns out it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> so after the first year, I, did, I never graduated the college. After the first year, I realized that most of the stuff that was being taught to me uh, was not helpful. I, I know this doesn't apply to everyone, but to me it was a waste of time. So basically what happened was uh, the degree itself wasn't, give me, wasn't giving me job certainty, but having skills did. So from then on, um, I realized I had to invest more. Uh, I forgot a part. During high school, the last year, I saw a pair of sneakers that was customized. I guess this was the most important part, actually, but <laughs> here I am. So I saw a pair of Vans custom sneakers on the internet, which were customized. Uh, these were based in the US. I didn't have the funds to get them to Romania. I didn't even have the funds to buy them. So what I did I found is I found some acrylic paints, and I tried making my own pair. Uh, there were people, people that laughed, but the ones that didn't, help me gain some confidence in myself. So this whole process of me painting sneakers on and off went on for like three years, time in which I, I didn't get any money. Um, and after, you could realize you don't have that many sneakers laying around in your house. So I had to work for free for my friends and for random people. Oh, you're changing. That is actually like the first pair that I ever did. The ones from which I was inspired were orange and looked much, much better. <laughs> So with the money in mind, being uh, in college still, I was thinking about ways to get more money. By that time, social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram were getting really big at, for the audience. So what I did is I noticed this trend, which has always been around, I guess, of people wanting to be different. 
So I analyzed the market and I came up with a conclusion. People are sick and tired of buying clothes from the mall. So I started hitting up thrift stores. Three or four times a week I would go there, buy as much as I could, easy to sell items that, that I would then flip on Facebook. So that's how I made money to invest in the side hustle that I got going on with the sneakers, with the paints and all that. So the turning point came after I realized that I can promote my work, which at that time wasn't into like the business level, that I can promote it on social media. So keeping Facebook and Instagram in mind, I started posting as much as I could. Till one day when there was a sudden turn in the events that were happening to me. A girl wrote to me and she was like, hey, I really enjoyed your artworks. Would you be willing to make one for me? Let me know when I can send the sneakers in and how much it would cost me. So I saw the message and I'm not gonna lie here. I waited for two days before getting back to her. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, sure thing, I can do it. Just send me the sneakers and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to painting them. It will cost you $15. I was stoked that I could make money from it. That was my first interaction with money from the passion that I really had. So from then, from then on, I realized that the more I, uh, the more I posted, the more people would, come, would get in contact with me and ask for custom artwork. So there was now business opportunity in what I loved doing. I didn't have to do a side hustle anymore. I didn't have to invest in something else. And that was the only thing that I could do from then on to promote myself. So six years later, uh, a thousand, more than a thousand customers actually, artworks for some of the most influential people in Romania and abroad, and campaigns with some of the biggest, biggest brands in the world. And here I am today in front of you. Whew. <laughs> Now, uh, notice how this has been a roller coaster and I, I have yet to discuss social media to its true extent. Um, here's why. By show of hands, please, how many people in this room ever decided to post a picture just because they knew it was gonna be appreciated instead of posting a random picture? Okay, so... <laughs> Didn't expect that result, to be honest. <laughs> uh, good, well, it's not good, but you've just experienced the first creator's dilemma. Do I create for myself? Do I create based on solely my popular, my, my beliefs? Or do I create for the audience? This is the question that a creator uh, gets in trouble with often. So imagine now, after, getting that result after being aware of the fact that you're self-aware of what you're posting in the online medium, imagine putting that in uh, with all of, all of your time, craft, energy, basically all, the, all that you're doing in order to get success. Here's where things tend to get tricky. Um, Wow. <laughs> so with social media being the only, the only almost, it's free actually. So social media is free, the internet is free. Uh, it's the easiest way to promote yourself as a struggling starting artist. So what do you do? What, what do you need first of all? And that is the point which I'm trying to make. First of all, for you to succeed in any business line, whether you're an artist, you're trying to promote your own brand or a service or a strategy, I don't know, for a, another brand, you need attention. You need people's eyes on you, just like I have your eyes on me right now. <laughs> okay, so attention comes into play. And when attention comes into play, another um, interesting things, thing happens with your creativity itself. So you start to judge your creativity based on what other, others think. Your own, your own values, your own set of values and creative value gets to a point in which it's at risk of being changed by, by what others expect from you. So you're no longer creating only for yourself, but for the audience, which is the most important thing because people have a reason to like something. So you have 
you have to have the empathy of realizing that and you have to be aware of the fact that you can't live in your own bubble as a creator. You have to take in mind what others think about you and your work. Okay. So realizing that from that point, and at that point actually I was uh, still working with a mindset that would only allow me to do the customs that I believed were good. So while there's a certain difference between the view of a creator and the one from a person who does not know your niche product, you have to still realize that there is value in what other people think. So what I did is I was I was working on two plans. The one, in, the one in which I was only doing for myself, creating for myself, and the one in which I was creating for other people as well. And this has allowed me to get to a point in which I would get more of the people's attention. <sighs> now good. <laughs> it's so, uh, it's pretty hard for me because I usually tend to, to keep these things as freestyle as possible, but there's, Trust me, there's a point to it. <laughs> so, oh, and this this is actually the first time in which I've written anything. So now there's an artistic ego that comes into play when you're dealing with the pressure from the society. Each and every idea that you make is gonna be dictated and changed by the perception itself. So despite realizing what was at stake and what I wanted to happen, there was always this question that was bothering me. Are you okay with the fact that you're creating for others instead of creating for yourself? And that still goes on in my mind. Now, this can get a creator into a certain creative rut. A creative rut is actually a path that if you take on multiple occasions, it gets harder and harder to get out of. So what I did, this doesn't apply to anyone, to everyone, but it applied to me, is I found my creativity in a different place. I took up photography and videography. From there on, each and every time I had a creative struggle, I would uh, take the camera, go wander around the streets, or take content for, I don't know, behind the scenes of what I was doing. This helped me get more authentic, show more of my work with, we, we, we can change that, I guess. <laughs> so share more of my work with my audience. So this is one of the works that I did almost three years after I started taking customizing sneakers seriously. So that was my alternative. So onto the social media itself. Thank you. Onto the social media itself, the, the key is actually a simple one. You have to post as much as you can, but always keep quality in mind. You have to never be ashamed of sharing your work with others because you think that you're gonna be, maybe, I don't know, you're, you're not gonna be appreciated. You're always gonna be comparing your work with others, but you don't know what they have behind them. It may be like 10 or 15 years of work Com in comparison to what you have, it may be, I don't know, limitless money, or they may even have a team behind them. So, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I've come to realize, that you have to believe in yourself, first of all, and this was not intended to be a motivational talk, I'm, I don't even know if it was, but the key for me was to always post as much as I could, keep the people in mind, keep their interest in mind, and most of all realize that uh, there's a reason for which the term social is in social media. Thank you.